you know, I think the importance in the design to allow people to sort of future-proof their purchase so that every five years or 10 years, they're not having to start all over again. They can just add to what they already have. We've allowed the, the grid, really, the grid operators to sort of dictate, you know, this is just sort of normal. Um, and so when you have this, you know, when you have this kind of system, it allows you to be independent of them. What are some of the advantages to that system design and architecture versus some of the traditional battery inverter products that we see on the market? All right, welcome back to the Solar Surge podcast. Hey, if you're new to the Solar Surge podcast channel, on this program we talk to the industry leaders, uh, the manufacturers, uh, solar sales leaders, um, but make sure, make sure that you have the, the best information about how to remain competitive uh, in the solar industry. Uh, and this afternoon I'm sitting down with Chris Miltimore, Director of Energy Storage at Roy Pow, and we're going to be talking about Roy Pow and how they've come to enter into the home energy storage market. So Chris, it's good to see you. Thanks for joining us on the podcast. Thanks, John. I'm really excited to be here. I'm a big fan. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, now Chris, I got to say, um, this space has gotten extremely competitive in the last couple of years. Uh, I would say in the last year or two, I've seen at least two dozen new energy storage startups or at least uh, new brands that are entering the U.S. residential energy storage market. So can you tell us why is it so important the approach that Roy Pow has taken with the all-in-one DC coupled energy storage solution, what are some of the advantages to that system design and architecture versus some of the traditional battery inverter products that we see on the market? Well, you know, from a from an aesthetic standpoint, right? I think it looks a lot. Uh, it looks better when it's an all-in-one uh, system, right? So um, we're really trying to think of energy storage system, an energy storage system, as more like an appliance, right? More like something that you you really wouldn't want to do without. And so you know, if you have wires coming all over the place, um, that just doesn't look good for one thing. Um, but the other thing I think that is important is the sort of modular design, right? There's so many differences in um, applications in for different homeowners. So the ability for uh, a system to adapt to what a customer really needs um, and, and wants, and the ability to sort of uh, prepare for the future. So you know, I know from my own uh, home when I when I bought my home, you know, it was whatever our load my load was, but you know, I've added a pool. I've added uh, additional appliances, and, and you know the load now compared to what it was 15 years ago is much greater. And so I, you know I think the importance in the design to allow people to sort of future-proof their purchase, so that, that every five years or 10 years they're not having to start all over again. They can just add to what they already have. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. You know, getting back to the first thing that you mentioned about you know just wires all over the place. You know, when I started in solar 12 years ago, I, I was a pretty much a battery only guy, and we were doing a lot of off grid, you know, completely off grid projects. Uh, and that's one of the things that you know you're right. I mean, it, it, these these older battery systems are like a, it's like a science experiment. You've got batteries and connectors and things all over the place. If you, you, you cross the wrong wires, you might start a fire in your garage. You know, now we're seeing that these these energy storage systems really are mainstreaming, and they do look or they are becoming to look more like everyday household appliances. Uh, so that's been really, really neat to see. The well, other people don't have the room, right? I mean, you have nine different components trying to make up your energy storage, and you know, I know my garage space is at a premium. I just don't have the physical space to put all that stuff. So if you can narrow it down to, you know, a much tighter location, it's just, you know, it'll it'll go into a lot more applications because some people just physically do not have the room for all of those components. So, Chris, one of the trends that I'm seeing now with a lot of the, the new energy storage products is is frankly just bigger, you know, bigger batteries, higher power outputs, um, whole house backup switching as opposed to critical loads backup. Um, why is it why is it advantageous to have high power output inverters compared to some of the traditional inverters that just wouldn't you know wouldn't even come close in terms of power? Well, you know, as we talked about just a moment ago, it, it gives you um, energy independence, right? So if if you have a smaller inverter, then you don't have the ability really to to use the entire um, uh, your entire load, right? So the load of the entire house is not able to be covered by that smaller inverter. And so then that forces you to choose, okay, 
which of my circuits are the most critical, which are the most important to me. And you know, I know for me that's a rolling target, right? So you know, sometimes my TV is more important than, uh, and sometimes it's well, it's always the refrigerator, right? So, but it forces you to sort of choose what do I want to back up, right? With a with a critical loads panel, these larger systems allow you to truly be your own grid, you know, your own grid operator, and, and it allows you to, when you have a power outage, to seamlessly go from the grid to your own system. And then, you know, if you have PV, you know, you're getting free energy. And if you don't have PV, then you can take advantage of nighttime rates to recharge that battery. But it gives you a much greater flexibility in what you're able to do with your own energy. And to, to your point from before, it, it allows you to take control, right? And so I think that's the tr why we're seeing this trend. And I think more and more people are sort of fed up with why should I have to choose? Why should I have to choose which circuits? Why, you know, the technology is available. It's increasingly getting less expensive. Um, you look at a system that was, you know, 10 years ago what it cost and what it costs now, uh, you know, and it's night and day, right? So why would you not do that? No, it's a good point. That's a good point. And, um, you know, when I, when I started doing solar and battery backups, it, it was critical loads backup only. You know, typically we might identify six to eight circuits that, that were in a critical loads panel. We had to physically move them into a separate, smaller critical loads panel with a, a switching mechanism, and that's all that, that had battery backup protection. And typically that, that was not going to include creature comforts like central air conditioning, was not going to include the laundry. You know, some of the things that you really would like to have during an outage, um, and that now some of the, the whole house backup solutions allow you to, um, you know, to enjoy. Uh, I got to say, I was surprised when, when some of the big solar names started offering smaller battery options, um, you know, Enphase is a product that we work with a lot and they, they introduced a three kilowatt hour battery, which I, I, I really didn't quite understand where does that fit in because that three kilowatt hours is, I mean, the average US home consumes 30 kilowatt hours right. in a day, so I didn't see that a battery that small you know, really had a place and now we're seeing much, much larger batteries and multi-battery deployments uh, coming out. I know for the projects that I'm doing, we're typically seeing 30 kilowatt hours or more of total storage for a, for a true whole house backup. Uh, and I know a lot of my clients, they want air conditioning. You know, they want to be able to run the laundry. Some of them want to be able to charge their electric vehicles, although I might not advise that they do that, but many of them, you know, express an interest, want to be able to charge their electric vehicle even if the grid's down, you know, directly from solar or directly from their own uh, standalone system. Now, Chris, I've, I've got to ask, because I think this is one of those, you know, 800 pound elephant in the room type questions, but, you know, with a lot of the new uh, competitors in the, the home energy storage space, one of the questions that I always find myself coming to is, not just what are the technical specifications of the product, but what kind of support is a manufacturer able to provide to the installers in terms of uh, training, you know, pre-install training, uh, but also post-install technical support and fleet management. How, how are you guys approaching that? Um, what, what can you offer to installers to, to maybe give them enough confidence to want to add your product to their offering as opposed to a more established U.S. solar brand where they already have that sort of support and training relationship? So for us, the installer relationship and the um, the ability to really have a good relationship with them is critical. You know, we're not selling directly to homeowners. We're not we're not interfacing really with the end user who's going to be using our product. And so, for us, having a relationship with the installer is key, right? And so that means uh, that you have to take care of them, and they have to have confidence in in the product, and they have to have confidence that after you sell them the product that it's going to, uh, that you're going to continue to take care of them. So I think the importance of training uh, so that they understand, again, they, you know, they're sitting in front of the customer, uh, the, the homeowner, and they have to be able to describe uh, what, how this is going to benefit from them, right? This whole kind of conversation that we're having right now, these are the kinds of conversations that happen around the, around the table, right? right? And, and when you're asking someone to invest uh, a substantial portion of their, you know, blood and sweat and tears of work, you know, and money to pay for this stuff, um, you have to be able to, to support that. So for us, um, having um, high quality training 
uh, making sure that the installer has resources from on the manufacturer side, uh, from an engineering standpoint. Uh, one of the things that uh, we're going to be offering is engineering support. So when uh, when a when unique situations come up, which is probably all of the time, right? Because <laughs> every house is a little different. Uh, we're going to offer the installers um, engineering support. And we're going to be offering them 24-hour um, uh, access to a live person. Um, for us, uh, you know, there's lots of companies. We talked about how there are many different people entering the market. A lot of them are coming from China. Um, a lot of them don't have a footprint here in the United States. They want to enter the U.S. marketplace, but they don't really have any brick and mortar um, apparatus here, right? right? And so uh, Roy Powell has invested a large amount. We have four offices in the United States. We're adding another one next month. Um, we have a staff of you know 70 people here in the United States. Uh, we have uh, technicians here in the United States. You know that engineering support is going to be happening here, uh, and you know a hundred different ways to get a hold of us uh, to be able to get the support that they need. Um, and you know it's really difficult when you are working with a company that's 12 hours ahead of time and, and time. You know people want answers and they want them right now. And so our goal and our aim is to provide um, the highest quality customer support for our installers. Good. All right, so Joe, you know, one of the questions I have is, you know, what do you think that we, we and as consumers, ought to expect out of energy storage systems going into the future? Yeah, no, that, that's a great question, Chris. And I, I think we really touched on a lot of it, which is that higher capacities, right, people that want to have a whole house capability, the ability to run whatever in their house is consuming energy, and, and to have a renewable energy system that can handle that demand. Um, and also convergence, you know, as we, as we talked about earlier, uh, what I'm seeing is there's a trend towards convergence on having, pretty much having all the major system components under one brand, all speaking the same language, so to speak, yeah. on one monitoring app. You know, when I, when I started in solar, it was all modular. You had one brand of inverter, you had one brand of charge controller. You, had, you could pretty much take any battery you want off the shelf, because we, we were using lead acid batteries, right. dumb, dumb, dumb batteries. Um, and we would mix and match all those components together. As, as I mentioned earlier, it was like a science experiment. You had to have a whole corner of your garage dedicated to housing all these components and you had wires going back and forth between all the different components and nothing was really talking to each other, right? The, the trend I'm seeing now is everything's under one platform. There's intelligent microprocessor-based, software-based controls and communication between the system components and the homeowner is going to have a very user-friendly, elegant app or web, web browser-based monitoring to where they don't even have to get into the weeds of how all this stuff connects together or works internally. They, they just know, this is how much power I'm generating, this is how much I have stored, this is how much I'm selling to the grid, this is how much I have available in a, in a blackout, and it all just kind of works together seamlessly. So that, that's, that's what I'm seeing. Yeah, I, you know, I think, again, to the point that we've already made here is that I think the more people feel comfortable with the, this appliance that they're going to have, you know, the more that they will buy into the fact that they can take control. And it's not as the app and the, um, the, the technology makes it easy for anybody to do it, right? And so, so you know, as we get more and more EVs on, uh, EV cars on the, on the road and the grid becomes even less stable than it is now, um, you know, it's going to be even more critical for customers to take control of their own lives um, and and not be caught, you know, with with a problem, right? So just it's it's a lot. It's better to prepare, you know, than to be unprepared, obviously. And and so um, I think the the more people sort of buy into that, um, the better off we're all going to be. And and the more which will help to stabilize the grid in the long run, right? It, when 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 people are more independent, that just takes more stress off of it, so which will be better for, for all involved. Right, right, and, that, and that, you, know, you mentioned one thing as well that I, sh I should touch on, which is the electric vehicles, and I think that the other, the other trend I'm seeing is that the, the electric vehicle now is almost considering that a part of the individual's home energy system, even though it's, it's a part that might, might be there sometimes and it might not be there at other times, but you know, we're starting to see more tight integration now. I mean, we're just at the earliest stages of it, but we're starting to see more tight integration now between electric vehicle charging and the larger home energy solar storage system.
Yeah, I mean, I think we're going to see more and more bi-directional, right? Mm -hmm. So that, I mean, you think about the size of the battery here compared to the size of the battery that's in your electric vehicle, it's your largest energy storage resource, right? right? And so, it may not always be fully charged, uh, but you know it's it's still a resource that would that's available. And coupled with this, you know, could allow a home to be independent for days. Right. right? So, absolutely. Well, Chris, I thank you for taking the time to sit down with us and chat about you know what's going on here in the energy storage space. Thanks for educating us on your product, and we're going to be covering this on the channel. Uh, as well as, is there anything else that you'd like to share with the audience here before we before we end the podcast? No, just you know, really grateful to uh, have spent some time with you. Uh, again, I've, I'm a big fan. I've uh, most of my uh, a lot of my education in in this realm has come from me watching your channel. Uh, so I'm really appreciative. I you know, from a Roy Pyle standpoint, um, you know, we are very experienced in batteries. Uh, we we have a lot of uh, battery products already out. This is maybe a new uh, uh, a new product for us. Um, for energy storage, uh, but Roy Powell has been around for a long time and we intend to be around for a long time to come. Great. Well, folks, another new player here in the energy storage space. Chris, thank you so much for uh, taking time Thanks, with us. And again, folks, th th that's why we're here. You know, that's why we're here at RE Plus uh, is so that, you know, for you that can't be here physically, you know, to make sure that you can still keep up with all the latest industry and product information and, uh, and really just kind of keep up with all that's going on with energy storage technology. Uh, but that pretty much does it for today's podcast. As always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.